Hi guys, it's Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. Today I'm here with September favourites. Um, I haven't worn as much as last month. Last month was pretty intense as you may have noticed by the length of the favourites video. Um, so this month definitely a reduction. I have been swatching some collections that I'm going to be doing collection videos for in the next week or so. So you should be seeing those coming up. Um, so yeah, let's just dig in. As always we start with mainstreams and I have three OPI for you. I feel that they're very nice like array of like autumny colours. I definitely for many weeks now have been getting more into the autumn shades rather than wearing summer colours and these are the three that I wore in September. The first one is Never A Dullest Moment and I love this yellow. I'm not the biggest yellow fan. I do feel like yellows are not made that often so if a brand does make a yellow I will buy it for that reason alone. But this one is like the perfect autumnal yellow. It's not too mustardy, it's not too light, it's not too bright, it's not too green. It's just this perfect in-between yellow and I just really really loved it. It came out last year in the Washington DC collection so you should still be able to get it if you want it. Was still opaque in three like most yellows, pretty streaky but this one is never a dullest moment. From that same Washington DC collection we have Susie the First Lady of Nails. This is a beautiful dark like hunter khaki green. Um, in my OPI vid collection video which is the last one that went up you would have seen I compared this to uh oh roll down the window. They are very similar, but the difference is, uh-oh, Droll Down the Window is a lot more yellow toned, whereas this is more of a true, like, army camo green. A little bit of grey in there. Completely opaque in two. This is Susie, the First Lady of Nails. And the last OPI is Keeping Susie at Bay. This came out in the San Francisco collection, and it's just a beautiful, dark, like, cerulean blue. I would say it's, like... <laughs> Blue, there's so many tones of blue, I do get myself confused, but like a royal blue, a cerulean blue, it, it's in there. It's a dark but bright blue. Absolutely love this one. I love a blue, and I have worn quite a few blues this month. I know some other um, nail vloggers and YouTubers and um, Instagrammers were doing um, September sapphires, so maybe I was kind of drawn towards that colour because I was seeing so much blue worn by other people. But I break into, this is Keeping Susie at Bay by OPI. One China Glaze, and this one here is Small Fun, and obviously another yellow, yellow, yellow autumny colour. If we compare the two of them, you can see here compared to Never A Dullest Moment, this one is a lot more bright and a lot more lime. On my nails, I felt it pulled more lime than lemon, I guess if you want to look on the spectrum like that. It was still pretty nice, I just think wearing the two of them so close together, I just realised that I love Never A Dullest Moment for a shade wise for me a lot more. But you're gonna get this opaque in three. This one is Small Fun by China Glaze. One Zoya, and this is Bevan. And again, this one also I showed comparisons of in my Zoya collection video. It's a nice, like, grey toned teal. If you compare it to Wednesday and Rocky, which are kind of similar colours by Zoya, this definitely pulls a lot more grey and a lot more teal. Um, a really nice transitional colour for autumn. This one gets completely opaque in two. This one is Zoya's Bevan. The last two mainstreams are from Essie. The first one we have is a blue, Loot the Booty. This is a nice, kind of similar, I guess, to Keeping Susie at Bay as the background colour. But then there is a ton of light blue shimmer in here. I didn't feel like the shimmer translated to the nail as well as it did in the bottle. It is still beautiful. It's just a little underwhelming, a tiny bit underwhelming, um, just because I wanted that glitter to be and shimmer to be much stronger. Beginning, it's going to opaque in almost one, but I did do two. This is Loot the Booty by Essie. The other Essie is Peach Side Babe. This came out in a summer collection maybe two years ago. This kind of made me realise, I try and convince myself that I'm a peachy kind of person, but I'm just not. I'm not drawn to this type of colour, really. Um, I, when I wear it, I'm never in totally in love with it. I know that, like, peaches are some people's favourite colours, but for me, it needs to be a peachy coral for me to want to wear it. Straight up peach, I just, I just don't like it on my skin tone. Completely opaque in three, this is Peach Side Babe by Essie. 
on to some indies. I'll start out with a British indie brand and this is Sparkly Nail Polish. You would have seen me talk about some of these in my Harry Potter videos. I'm going to be doing a two and th part three Harry Potter video that I'm kind of just working on the swatches for now. So you will see some of these, or I think all three of these are spoken about in the next Harry Potter video. But the first one is we call the Muggles um, and this is a dark navy holographic with a ton of larger flakies in there in silver. Really stunning and completely opaque in two. So that one is we call the Muggles and this is part of the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them duo. And then have Dementor's Kiss, which is a super dense um, grey and hologra like silver holographic glitter. This does dry extremely textured on your nails because it is um, a multi, it's, it's a dense multi glitter. Um, so yeah, a particularly opaque in two. So this Dementor's Kiss. In the same sort of setup but in pink, we have High Inquisitor, which is a super girly pink holographic, pink dense micro glitter holographic, all those words in one. Um, yeah, it's really nice, but it's just super gritty. If you don't like textured polishes, you'd want to put a top coat or at least, or maybe even two, two coats of top coat. So High Inquisitor by Sparkly Nail Polish. And as always, all indie sellers will be linked down below. A pretty serious we have here, and this is one of the older Halloween ones. They have just rebranded and repackaged, so there's building huge discounts and huge sales. This one is called Baphomet Berserker, and it is a, a black jelly base with a ton of multi-chrome glitters in here. Um, I love this one. The glitters are not... They're like little tiny perfect round circles. They actually applied and removed really nicely. The jelly base black is a black jelly base. There's nothing worse when you see a black polish that applies and it looks gray. This was a beautiful curly formula. I love this one. So three coats of Baphomet Berserker by Pretty Serious. Another one to feature in the Harry Potter video is going to be we Weasley's or Wizard Wheezes, which is hard to say. Um, and this is by Lack Attack, which doesn't exist anymore. This is a clear base with a ton of um, orange bar glitter, orange hex glitter, yellow hex glitter, and yellow micro glitter. Um, and it's obviously to be worn as a glitter topper. I wore this over Keeping Susie at Bay, and I remember that when this collection was first released a million years ago, that's how some of the swatches were wearing it, over a blue, and the contrast of the blue and the orange just looks amazing. So you're gonna see one coat of um, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes by Lack Attack over Keeping Susie at Bay by OPI. one dollish polish and this is I will find you this was the Glen polish um, Glen from the Walking Dead polish and this is beautiful it reminds me of the Herschel polish that she came out with also Walking Dead character so if you're not a fan of that one or you feel that you have that one you may not need both of these to me they were similar on purpose because of the connection between the characters in the show so it's like a milky cream base but this one has a lot of multi-chrome um, micro glitters and black flakies in here very nice very dainty very soft but also kind of works in the walking dead world because it's not super bright when i think of the walking dead i don't think of like pinks and like creams i think of glitters and dirt like dirty grungy colors and i think this fits in beautifully so completely opaque in three. This is I Will Find You by Dollish Polish. Moving on to two crazy super glitters. Finishing us up, we have one by Cirque, and this is one is called Pareba or Pareba. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. And this is stunning. This is, as you can see, a beautiful bright teal with a ton of silver in here as well. This is flaky, so it's going to apply really nicely. It's going to remove really nicely. It's just it's so good. It's almost completely opaque in one, but I do do two. It's just, it's light off of your nails. It's just vibrant and glittery and oh, I love this one. I don't have a ton of Cirque polishes. This is kind of like Halcyon formula, but just with the teal color. Really, really great. So that one is Pareba by um, Cirque. Last but not least, we have Juliet by I Love Nail Polish, and I don't own a, own a ton of I Love Nail Polish either. This one is meant to be like Halcyon by Cirque on steroids, and I can completely agree with that. It's pretty much the same combination as the base. You have a ton of um, gold flakies and rose gold flakies, but in through this, there is holographic, and it just elevates it so much more. It kind of feels bad because it is almost kind of like a copycat of Cirque, but then with the hollow, it just 
raises the game a bit. I know that um, I Love Nail Polish do use a lot of holographics and flakies and things in their polishes, so it's not off-brand, but it's just coincidence that it is similar. Um, I just love this one, everything about it, completely opaque in two. This is Juliet by I Love Nail Polish. And that is it. That is everything that I wore this month. I will be linking down below any individual reviews that I've done, although I don't think I did much reviewing this month, really, or did I? I think the ones that I've done, I'm, I'm, I'm about to put them up. I did a lot of my nail polish collection, so I'm hoping you've all been enjoying watching that. Before you go, I have two empties really quick. The first one is the Zoya Base Coat in Get Even, and this is the Ridge Filling Base Coat. Um, this was okay. Um, it was obviously a white milky base coat and I like having a white base coat and a clear base coat going together. I find that creams and like lighter creams and glitters go on better over this sort of base coat. But this just was not ridge filling at all. If you bought it for the ridge filling purpose, I would say that it doesn't work. But if you just wear it, bought it like I did just to wear as a white base coat, then it does work. So it's a good and a bad. If you buy it for ridge filling, it's not going to work, but it's just a nice base coat if you're not looking for the ridge filling. How many times can I say ridge filling? And a top coat. This one is the 90 No Time To Waste top coat. I love this one. It dries super fast and super shiny. I think this might be my only bottle that I had left. I bought a few back from me when I was with Jess, and I think I've used them all up now. It is really nice. It is, to me, comparable to the Rimmel top coat that I normally buy because it is super fast drying and super shiny. So if you're placing an order, I would say maybe grab one to try but if you have a good like quick dry top coat i'd say you probably don't need to spend your money on it because fast dry top coats are all pretty much for muchness in my opinion anyway um, but yeah that one was the 909 time to waste top coat Thank you so much for watching my September favourites. I hope you had a great end to your summer and start to your autumn. Like I say, lots of videos coming, lots of swatches I've got to do. Um, so yeah, I will see you very soon. Thank you for watching.